Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian welcoming you to Out of the Park Baseball 21 with the Pittsburgh Pirates, the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. Let's be specific here. Uh, we just completed our run of three consecutive National League pennants, and this time we finally brought home the bacon uh, or alternate food of your choice. I certainly am not going to judge your favorite food or not. Um, before we continue on, um, I wanted to make a super quick announcement about this series. I don't know if I've done it already, so if I have and this is old news, feel free to mock me, but if it's not, um, once OOTP 22 releases, I'm going to go ahead and convert this save into 22 and we're going to keep going. Because assuming they release 22 in late March, early April, which has been their their modus operandi up to this point, there's no way we're going to catch up to the present day or even into the really interesting years in like the 70s or 80s or whatever before the new game comes out. So if that was a concern of yours, rest assured that you need not be concerned and that we will be continuing this series into uh, OTP 22 and possibly beyond unless I get tired of it. Uh, with that being said, what a season that last season was. In no small part thanks to Joe Tinker's redonkulous defense... Jimmy Williams was exactly the player we needed. Um, this may rank among my all-time best OTP trades because he's been a terrific defender, but also one of the best hitters in the Ameri in the National League, rather. Oh boy, I lead the league in RBI. Dude, RBI are basically not even a real stat. They're the junkest of junk stats, except for pitcher wins. Frank Sheckard had an amazing season, or Jimmy Sheckard, rather. Leading the league in walks, I approve. Frank Chance led the league in on base percentage, which is arguably even better. Didn't lead in batting average, but did lead the league in hits, and I'm going to take that every day of the week. Kip Selbach turned in the best year of his young career. Uh, look at this shit. 28 triples. Hmm. Didn't even lead the league, though. Uh, Bobby Lowe was fine, and now I kind of run out of the superlatives. Uh, I still have a lot of faith that Larry McLean is going to be as useful to this team as Jimmy Williams. I know it's going to take him a while to fully develop as a hitter, and he did basically skip... No, I guess he did play in AAA. But yeah, I think he's exactly what we need. Um, and then Charlie Duffy. Turned out to be okay. Um, I guess that's one of the things I really truly love about... Wait, how is this possible? How does he have eight gold gloves, but hasn't played in the majors for eight years? What am I missing here? Oh, I guess I must have just had the wrong thing clicked. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, um, I think we could definitely use more center fielders, a new center fielder, and we need a long-term solution at third base. I think those are the two holes we need to still fill because Bobby Lowe's already 39. Um, and while he's been excellent for us since we've acquired him... Eventually, he's going to become a liability. So we really just need youth, and we need depth. And if we can get those two things, I think we're going to see this dynasty continue. Now, of all the players who produced great seasons last year, Kip Selbach worries me the most. And why, I hear you asking. Because this war is significantly more than the previous two seasons combined. 
And it's fueled by the most unreliable of Major League Baseball stats, which is his triples. Triples just don't correlate well from season to season. And it's really difficult to see when somebody is or is not actually capable of producing that level of ability again. The other thing I'm noticing here is look at the OPS, 800. He was at 900, and that was about where he was before. It looks like he just did really, really well relative to the rest of the league. This may not necessarily be a true function of him getting better as a player or even being particularly exciting. Um, also, this needs to stop. Uh, where is it here? There we go. Yeah. Um, if you can't steal at a 75% clip, you're actually hurting the team. And good lord, does this man like to get caught stealing. So I am putting the brakes on him because just don't do it, dude. Like, we look at his all-time stats. Yeah, he's stolen 333 bases, but he's been caught 300 times. That's not nearly good enough. Uh, hopefully he will get the freaking hint and slow his roll so that he doesn't hurt the team more than he's helping them. I bet if we look at his base runs, it's pretty bad. Yeah, look at that. Minus six. Chance, are you doing it too? Why? Why are you running so often? You're hurting the team. All right. You too, my dude. not telling you you can never do it, but I'm telling you to back the fuck off. Because you're actually almost costing us a win on the base paths. Be more like Jimmy Shackard. I mean, Jimmy Shackard's not doing a great job either, but he steals so well, at least these past couple seasons, that I'll let it slide. But... But then again, this is just the way the baseball was played in the dead ball era, is teams would steal way more than they actually needed to because that was one of the rare ways they could advance uh, on the base paths. Are you doing it again, game? Good. I don't have to stab you. <laughs> Doc White had a season for the ages. Um, yes, he didn't technically win the pitching triple crown, but... It's only because they rely on ERA, and ERA is a subjunctive junk stat. Um, it's not a junk stat. I'm sorry. Pitcher wins and RBI and saves are the three worst, and those are the true junk stats. This is merely just not a, not a quality stat if you don't consider the context, which is that um, ERA is highly subjective because all it takes is the official score to decide that something is or isn't an error, and it affects the stat. Which is just not ideal, right? Jake Weimer. Very nice. Led the league in innings pitched. I can get behind that. And then Nixie Callahan, who is still worrying me because it seems like he keeps getting hurt. But other than that, has been producing some fantastic value ever since we acquired him. But I am very concerned. Uh, his rate stats have plummeted quite a lot, actually. Um, in particular, his control. At this About this time in 1903, he was considered a pretty good control pitcher. But he's losing velocity, and he's losing control. He probably needs to be replaced at this point, sooner rather than later. <laughs> I think that is an upgrade that we can also make here in the offseason. So, three positions I'm looking for. Center field, third base, starting pitcher. Uh, other than that, we'll just take the best player available. And if we need to trade him later on, we'll trade him. Uh, if we look at the minors, we have a few interesting players, but nobody I'd really consider to be potential major leaguers. 
Um, like I think Frank Karish is better, or Fred Karish is better than Luke Ryger. Especially because, yeah, you know what? I think we're just going to try to trade Krieger so we can promote Karish as the backup catcher. Can I get a third base or center field upgrade or pitcher for him? I'm looking for green. I'm not finding it. That's all right. I'll just release him. There's nobody here. Jim Donnelly? No. Yeah, there's nobody here that I look at, and I instantly say, I need more of that in my life. So I think I might actually just... Um, just wave Krieger and see if anybody else takes him. And then I'm going to go ahead and promote Karish. Because Karish has earned his spot in the majors with his performance in the minors. I have no concerns at all about his ability to back up in back up as my catcher. And also probably play a fair bit of first base too because he's also a relatively decent one and I didn't have a good backup first baseman. And then again, we just find ourselves needing more warm bodies, um, which I think is one of the most consistent trends of our thing here. Oh, we have to activate Ed Greminger, don't we? And maybe Greminger is the answer to the third base question. I don't know. Oh, no. Don't take Leo Krieger, Cincinnati. Please. Uh, how, much are, how much are other teams, like the St. Louis Browns? They're charging fans 74 cents, and here I am only charging them 51 like a chump. The Phillies are charging almost a dollar. I'm sorry, fans. I just gave you three consecutive pennant winners. 61 cents i know 10 cents but you know what i think you'll pay it because we're awesome Okay. Fine. Just ruined my entire off season. Joe Tinker finally got his gold glove, as did Doc White. Very neat. Jimmy Williams, Jimmy Shepard both took home some silver sluggers. I got manager of the year. I mean, of course I did. Cy Young for Doc White. A few people voted for Toad Ramsey. Uh, I'm not going to deny his amazing name, but he was not as good a pitcher as Doc White. I think they'll have voted for him because he led the league in ERA, which, you know, fair, but not relevant. Did we get an MVP, too? We did not. I must know. George Davis again? Would this guy just go away? I'm frankly shocked he didn't win another gold glove, but Joe Tinker beat him, so good for him. Yeah. George freaking White. How have the Reds not won, like, 11 World Series with this guy? Like, they've won two. I don't get it. How do you have a player of the caliber of George Davis and not win all of the World Series with them? I know it takes a team, right? And that's probably why it didn't happen, but... Holy pig. All right. I don't really care...
Oh, uh, we'll just sim up to Hall of Fame voting. I'm not really gonna mess with. Uh, not really gonna mess with trades because I think all the players I have that might I might want to trade would be players that are essential to my efforts here. Hall of Fame, Bob Carruthers, you're in. But I have a feeling that you're gonna have a hard time getting in because your one loss record isn't great. Which is a, which is possibly the worst way to judge a pitcher, but. Um, uh, yeah, I'm good with this. Pebbly Jack. Yeah, this is definitely a Hall of Fame career. Oh, something I never explained, in case you guys don't know this. The black ink test is awarded every time a player finishes in the top in a particular stat. Gray ink is any time they're in the top 10. And then the standards are based on career versus peak. And then the HOF monitor includes things like awards and stuff like that. Um, so in this case, he gets nine for the black ink because he led the league three times in plate appearances once in hits, once in runs, once in at-bats, and twice in wins. Uh, wins above replacement. But, no, I'm perfectly fine with this. Um, I think he's an excellent choice for the Hall of Fame, even if he doesn't have 3,000 hits. But I don't think it's fair to put that on him when that just wasn't a thing. Oh, here's the other time he led the league. Uh, maybe that one shouldn't count for the black ink, but all right, dude. Yeah, I'm happy to vote for him. Highly deserved. Germany Smith is not a super impressive offensive player. If I'm honest with you. I guess he did have a pretty terrific defensive reputation, right? Like, in terms of his zone rating and his range factor, it's pretty crazy good. Like, until he hit the age of 33, he wasn't ever below average, and he was significantly higher than that. But his offensive stats are just... I guess compared to his, I guess compared to his era, they weren't bad. Yeah, I'll vote for him. I think it's fair. Charlie Sweeney, no question. I know, I mean, I just got through telling you how garbage pitcher wins are. But I'll tell you the inverse to that story, which is that anyone who got 300 wins must have been a good enough pitcher to just pitch that long. And I think that's why, even for me, 300 wins is enough to get voted into the Hall. But the rest of his stats are amazing, too. In 5,000 innings, pitch 478 complete games, 2,000-plus strikeouts. It's real good. Oh, no one important in this draft. Just a bunch of losers. Ty Cobb. Pfft. He's a nobody. I'm kidding, but he also was uh, a pretty big racist. Although, I recently read a story on The Athletic where someone pointed out that uh, Ty Cobb's biographer hated his guts, and so they think some of the worst stories about Cobb might have been made up. Is that true? I have no way of knowing because I didn't know the guy. He predates me by a pretty long period of time. But I mean, he was the hit king before uh, before Pete Rose. Look at that. 200 wins above replacement. Yeah, Ty Cobb is, uh, was a pretty good baseball player. I think I feel comfortable saying that. Um... I mean, is he going to fall to us at 15? Absolutely not. Just no.
like you would have to be brain dead to have a player like Ty Cobb available to you and taking literally anybody else available. New York Highlanders, a.k.a. the future Yankees. Do you take Ty Cobb? You do. Good for you. Give me my scout, damn it. Mm. OTP, I would love you to please set a default setting in the game somewhere where it never shows OSA by default. That the player has to actually click a button to get it to change to OSA. Because that's, I don't know. I, I mean, it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but I do find it irritating. All right, so here's what we've got left to choose from. And it literally fixes none of our problems. Uh, so Jay Clark is not a player that I'm interested in. I'm just not. I think our current catcher is perfectly suitable, and I don't need a second one. Al Bridwell is just a worse version of Joe Tinker. Now, Mike Mowry. Mowry is a very good third baseman. But, I don't know that I trust his offensive profile. Now, a quick, quick sidetrack, somewhat sidetrack. You may have heard of something called the defensive spectrum. In which uh, we place all major league players based on position on one end or another of a spectrum. Um, the farther to the right you go, the harder the position is. So typically you've got catcher at the very far right and DH at the very far left. One of the interesting changes that happened in baseball history, um, and this happens in, in like the 20s or the 30s, is... After the dead ball era starts to die down, a bunting for a hit becomes far less important. And once bunting starts disappearing, third base becomes a little bit less important. But for a while, third base was considered as important as any other position besides catcher or shortstop. Just because of how often they had to charge in and field bunts. I don't know if I'm sold on Maori. Like, I love his ability to draw walks and not strike out. I do like that. But I'm concerned he won't have enough contact to stay in the lineup. So Maori is a maybe for me. Honestly, I'm thinking we go starting pitcher. Hey, it's Branch Rickey, who would later become the general manager that signed uh, Jackie Robinson out of the Negro Leagues. Um, I mean... I kind of think Harry McIntyre is my pick here. Like, I don't... I don't I'm not not acknowledging that we don't need a new young third baseman, because we do. But I'm just not convinced he's going to be the all-around third baseman that we need. If he's available in the second round, I'll take him. But especially this early in baseball history, your first-round draft picks have to hit. If you're going to be successful. In modern baseball, you draft so many players that even if you flub the first round pick, you can still have a great draft and still keep improving your team. But at this period in baseball history, well, first of all, the draft didn't even exist at this part in baseball history. But this is merely a thing that OTP does in order to accurately simulate historical baseball and at least give you a chance. Because in reality... Um, Teams got developed by sending area scouts and other players all around the country and just paying the money or through independent minor leagues or what have you. Um, the draft came into existence on, I want to say, the 60s or 70s. Um, I don't have my phone right now, or I'd look it up. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the amateur draft came in right around the 60s or 70s. But all this regardless, 
Um, I'm not taking Mori. I'm taking McIntyre. And that is a thing. Uh oh. A thing happened to my other cell phone. I'll figure it out later. Let's auto pick until my next pick. And now we're at the point of the draft where we're going to get a whole bunch of players that aren't particularly exciting. Um, there is still Harry Abel's. And he looks like one hell of a relief pitcher that also needs one hell of a long time to develop. I'm also intrigued by Otis Kleiner here because I do want some outfielders in case we need to replace people. But I'm not convinced he's a great choice either. Hmm... I mean, the chance of an all-time great reliever, even if it takes him a while to develop, is such a is such a powerful competitive advantage, right? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, do it. All right, we saw Frank Delahanty, who is not very good. There's a lot of players here who aren't very good. That's not great. It's not good either. All right, you do your thing. Um. Little Hanty is from Cleveland. And I should make a difference, but maybe it does. Okay, if you're already 28 years old and you're that bad at second base, you're a waste of my time. Allie Strobel. Eh. I guess I'll take Delahanty. I'm not convinced that he's all that great, but he certainly looks better than the two out infielders. And he's from Cleveland. So we'll take him. I guess I'll take Homer Hillebrand. <laughs> Jim Cockman. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Meet man. <laughs> Uh, I've got so much money and nothing else to spend it on, so you can all have some money. Sure, your name is good, so you must be good. Therefore, I'm going to pay you $130. That is my, my thinking. Rule 5 draft. I don't think I have anybody. I could lose Husting here. That did not bother to me at all. Rule 5 draft. Um... I'm not seeing a lot here to get me hot and bothered. Um, so what positions am I short on? I could use, I think, another infielder. So I think for that purpose, I would actually take a player in the Rule 5 draft. Like a Jim McGuire wouldn't be like a great addition, but he plays a number of infield positions quite expertly. And that makes him valuable to this team. So I think I will go ahead and take Jim McGuire. Like, he's not going to start. 
for sure, not over Jimmy Williams. I just want a little bit more depth. And then I wouldn't mind uh, what other position could we use some reinforcements at? I could use another outfielder. Maybe I'll take Pete Woodruff. Like, I know he's not very good. Nah, he's kind of trash, actually. I want someone who could at least sometimes hit for contact. Yeah, I think a guy like Fred Clark fits the team a little bit better. He's a decent left fielder, doesn't make many errors, hits for a bit of power. There is lefty Houts, but my god, the man can't hit. Like, at all. Uh, Woodruff or Clark? I think Clark. And then I will go ahead and auto-draft the rest of it. Because I got what I wanted, which is just a couple of extra... Just a couple of, of hands, of farm hands. I don't know why I called them farm hands, but I did. Just players to fill in is all I wanted. I just wanted a couple of decent veterans in case of injuries. Because a drop-off from, say, Kip Selbach to Joe Rickert is much steeper than the one between Kip Selbach and Fred Clark. Um... I feel a little bit better about the team as a whole, even if I'm not super enthusiastic about some of our players. And we didn't we didn't get a major upgrade this offseason, unless you're counting starting pitching. Because I think we're probably going to trade Nixie when he's at his highest value, because I don't see his future career going terribly well. And that may be the source of the major improvement that we're looking for. Did everybody sign? They did. Welcome to the majors, McIntyre. Nixie, what can I get for you? I'm getting a lot of offers. Which is good. I could get Three Finger Brown. I'm getting really good offers for him. I did not anticipate this whatsoever. Like, a lot of them are stereotypical. I have too many pitchers kind of things, but... All right, let's, let's research based only on batters. All right, Sam Mertes is a bad fielder but a good hitter i don't need one of those bill lang is a great hitter but again a terrible center fielder he's overslept what a jerk unacceptable Larry Schlaffy just doesn't fit my team. Uh, Harry Bay is decent, but again, he's not going to start on this team. Harry Bemis can't field. Judge McCready can't either. Roger Bresnahan can't hit. All right, let's narrow this down to third baseman. All right, Jimmy Burke. Meh. Meh is the word I'm looking for there. Can Henry Krug play third? He can. He's not very good at it. Okay. <laughs> I don't need another overage third baseman. I'm looking toward the future. 
Nope. Uh uh. Afraid not. Hell no. I mean, Billy Klingman's an amazing third baseman, so I mean, props for that, but I don't think that's what this team needs. A guy like Bob Hall has some value just because he can play all over the place, but I'm not convinced that he's a good fit. I could get Oyster Burns, um, but I don't think that's a good choice either. Is that even a real oyster? I don't think. Fred Hartman, maybe. He seems pretty well put together. But his defensive track record is pretty damn awful. And I'm looking for a good all-around third baseman. Yeah, none of these are impressive to me. And let's check center field. Bill Lang, if you could even handle yourself in center, I would think about it. You're only a little bit below average. Ah, oh, but it looks like they've been keeping you out of the field. Which means I shouldn't trust your defensive stats. I'm leaning towards Harry Bay. And this is mostly because he can play center or left. And he's a decent contact hitter. Um... Mm. There's Rabbit Nil. Uh, that's a pretty cool name, and he's a decent center fielder. But I don't like his offensive skill set for this era. I don't think being a big home run and walk guy is going to help if he can't make contact. But I am at least mildly intrigued by him. Tom Fisher can't hit. I'm not going to make him a center fielder. I mean, I'm not going to make Roger Bresnahan a center fielder either. I'm being distracted by the green numbers. Danny Hoffman. Also, let me use filters on this page, OOTP. I really think the trade interface needs a lot of work. And it has for a while, so I'm hoping that maybe it gets some love in the next version. Yeah, I kind of think Harry Bay. I think he is the answer to the question of how can I get an improvement to the team? I must have Johnny Evers. No, I'm not going to get rid of Jimmy Williams. Uh, those of you who don't know, I'm going to try to remember to post a link to it in the description. There's a very famous poem um, about Tinker, Evers, and Chance. I don't remember who wrote it, but it was about when they all played for the Cubs. And they were, like, the main faces of the team when the Cubs won their last World Series in 1908. Before their, their victory in 2016 that we're not going to talk about. Um, as predicted, Carruthers, Sweeney, and Glasscock all sail in. The other pitchers who were real, real good, but didn't have the win-loss record, didn't make it. There's Emsley. What is your fascination with the only Nolan, besides his cool name? Like, I don't look at any of these stats and see Hall of Famer. Like, what stats did you even lead the league in? 
Okay, homers per nine and hits per nine. You did that three times, but it says you have six. Winning percentage, that's four. Yeah, I don't get your fascination with him. This is not a Hall of Famer. Unless you're just going based on his nickname, then, well, maybe that's his his nickname, but... Like, he's way worse than every other pitcher in the Hall of Fame. What is your fascination with him? I don't get it. Uh, but that happened... <clears throat> You're also Selbach insurance, by the way. If Selbach starts to slip, I have a replacement on hand. But yeah, I think that was a good trade. And we'll make some sort of chicken salad out of the, the chicken shit that is my third base situation. I'm not too fussed about that. Can you give me OSA scouting? Why? Thank you for raising my draft budget. That means a lot to me, owner. I'm not going to dignify your name with an actual response. I'm just going to call you owner. <clears throat> How is Bobby Lowe getting better at the age of 39? Like, how? Literally, how is he getting better? I don't know, but I'm not going to question it. Uh, fuck you. I didn't even check to see if Emmett Hendrick is any good. He is kind of good. But no. I am I am not doing that. You can put a sock in it. Um look, Mr. Flaherty, I still like you for your ability to be a backup starter if I need one. Uh Hillebrand and Hines, you can also be on the the roster here. And then bench coach, do your thing. Front office. Did I neglect hire any coaches? I didn't. Amazing. <clears throat> Look, far too few men in 2021 are named Spud, and I think that should change. We need more spuds. By the way, if your name is actually Spud, uh, drop a comment in down below. I'd be very impressed to hear if people are still naming their children Spud. Um, when I was a young a young lad, I used to uh, we used to go to SeaWorld outside of Cleveland when there used to be one there, and. Uh, and every year we'd go look at the the seals and there was one that I named Spud because he looked like a potato. And I've looked for him every year and I don't think I ever saw him again. But maybe it's because I was just a dumb little kid and I couldn't tell seals apart. But that is that is possibly my origin story. Much like when Batman's parents were were shot. Spoiler I guess if you haven't if you've somehow managed to live your entire life without seeing one Batman movie or television program uh then I'm sorry but Batman's parents die uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. uh bear you are literally garbage I guess not literally you're definitely off my team. Um, and then Hillebrand, you're demoted. Heinz, you're demoted. 
What other, what do I have too many of? I have enough pitchers. I feel pretty good with my pitching staff. I think I have too many hitters. Ah, uh, McCormick. Yeah, you turned out not to be a very good third baseman. Uh, all I can ask you to do is suck less in the minors and see if that gets you somewhere. And then I guess I just go ahead and put Pickering on the DL, and then we'll worry about where to put the last guy later. All right. Opening day. Uh, Doc White slipped a little bit. So did Weimer. Chance Jimmy Williams is about the same. Oh no, Bobby Lowe is finally starting to get a little bit worse. Um, it's nothing too shocking here, actually. Top 100 prospects. I don't know how I feel about a, a future in which, or, or a baseball pass in which Ty Cobb plays for the Yankees. I know they're not the Yankees yet, but they will be. I think next season? Something like that. Um, game. Quit putting OSA scouting in. I don't care. Give me my scouting. All right. Before I stab my computer, let's uh, let's set the staff up. All right. I know I typically do this by ratings. Um, it's maybe not the best way to do it, but it's the only way I know to do it. Wait, why is this stamina one? Okay, it was freaking me out for a second there. I thought it said stamina one. All right. Um, number two starter. I'm gonna give it to Weimer just because Weimer has actually pitched for me before, and McIntyre can be the third starter. Relief. I think it was Ralph Caldwell that did most of the stopping last season, and he's still quite clearly the best reliever on this team. So I'm once again going to make you my stopper. Uh, and then Al Orth. You're going to be middle reliever used more frequently. Uh, Patsy Flaherty. Al Orth has really good stamina too. Maybe I don't need Flaherty anymore. But you work fine as an emergency starter or a long reliever. And you did okay for me last season, right? You gave me 90-plus innings of, of quality pitching when I needed it, when Callahan was injured, and then everyone else, you're just a middle reliever. All right, lineups. Clear it out. All right, let's make this easier. You, my friend, are not a two-way player. I don't think any of you should be. I don't think any of you are good enough hitters. All right. Jake, not a two-way player. Can you even hit, Charlie? You sure can't. Uh, so set game strategy, not a two-way player. Flaherty, you have some power. I wouldn't mind you terribly being a pinch hitter. Al Orth, you're decent, but you only play first, and I've got a proper backup first baseman now. 
And I'd rather see you pitching more when you can help the team rather than um, wasting you. So there we go. All right, now we only have 17 batters, which I think is a little bit more reasonable. Okay, botting ratings. Um, I still think it's Shekard hits third and Chance leads off. It could be the other way, but Shekard is ever so slightly better at hitting third because he has ever so slightly more power. Uh, Jimmy Williams bats cleanup. Selbach bats second. Um, Bobby Lowe hitting fifth isn't the worst idea I've ever heard. We can do that. Harry Bay, you hit for contact, but not much else. Do I make you a center fielder? The starting center fielder. Or do we let Charlie Duffy have one last gasp at Major League Greatness? I think we go for Duffy. But I'm not going to bat him that high. I'd rather have somebody who's, I'm more confident can get on base. Hit there. Bobby Wallace can no longer play third base. Uh, I'm going to trade you. Maybe you never could play third base. I don't know. But at least give me somebody young. If I go up to regulars. Yeah, you're only going to trade him for another overpriced veteran. Well, I know who's not backing up at third base. That's for darn sure. Um, Who hit sixth? Joe Tinker, maybe? Yeah, like, my top hitters are my top hitters. It could also be McLean, actually. But I'd rather have Tinker hit over McLean. Hit fifth. Yeah, we'll six. We'll do that. Tinker, McLean, and then Duffy will play center. All right, moving on to backups. Backup for left and center will be Mr. Bay. Back up for third base will not be Bobby Wallace. It will instead be Ed Greminger. Uh, Fred Karish will be the backup at catcher and the backup at first. Jim McGuire, you're going to back up at second and short maybe? Yeah, you can handle short well enough in a pinch. Uh, Ed Beecher will not be backing up. Joe Ricker, you're going to be the backup to the backup and left. Oh, I see. You just won't start. I'm fine with that. I don't really have a backup right fielder. Oh, no, I ignored Fred Clark, didn't I? Yeah, Fred Clark should be on this list, actually. Screw it. Ricker, you can learn how to play right. I believe in you. I don't believe in you, but you don't need to know that. Uh, pinch hitter. Uh, this is where Bobby Wallace is his time to shine is. Harry Bay. Uh, who else is a good hitter that doesn't have an actual role on the team yet? Greminger is pretty okay. And then Patsy Flaherty, just for the odd bomb that that he will hit. Uh, base stealing, Beecher. It's really the only reason he's on the team right now, I guess. And Bay. Yeah, Beecher and Bay. That's a good setup. We probably have too many outfielders, all things considered, and not enough infielders, but I think that's mostly because I don't realize how bad Bobby Wallace had gotten. Uh, I definitely don't want him playing third. 
In fact, I'm going to make McGuire the third third baseman because I don't want Wallace playing third. All right, I think this works. Copy, copy. Paste, paste. And let us proceed to baseball glory. Maybe. Damn it, Bill Dineen, not allowed. Oh, so I must have taken Pete McBride in the Rule 5 draft. Wait, they should not have been returned to me. They should have just been released. Because you weren't taken in the Rule, you are taken in the Rule 5 draft two seasons ago. I mean, I'm not going to complain. I don't mind having someone of his caliber in AAA. He does. Ugh, get fine. I'm just going to release him then. I don't want him. I don't want to take a chance that I have to put him on the Major League roster and then he takes up a spot from someone who's much better than he is. Ollie Pickering is considerably better than Ed Beecher. So away you go, Ed. And then Mr. Pickering, you're going to be the number one backup at right. I don't know that I'm willing to let you start, but we're going to see how Duffy does. Um, but I at least want to give him a chance. And if he, if he screws the pooch, then I'll swap you out. Uh, and then we do the same over, over here. And then Rickard is now the third player there. Well, I guess it is going to be Larry Bay's time to shine. We're getting shut out a little too frequently for my tastes. Uh, so my players are getting a bit worse. Karish is improving a tiny bit. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'm not seeing any huge changes. <clears throat> Bert Husting put a little bit of heat on his fastball. That's always a good sign. Frank Delahanty is improving. I certainly don't mind seeing that. Doc White was best starter in April. Harry McIntyre won Rookie of the Month. How's the offense looking? Bobby Lowe is hot garbage at this point. Like, he's real, real bad. Everyone else is mostly fine except for Duffy. Um... Let's give it one more month and just see how things work out, and then I'll decide if I need to replace anybody or not. Like, Joe Tinker hitting 300-plus is not something I expected, but I'm going to take it every day of the week. Yeah, I think we'll just go through the next month and see where that gets us. Um, different players are getting slightly better or slightly worse. McLean's power is getting better. That's pretty sweet. All right. Things are happening. <clears throat> so if you had Harry McIntyre is like the second best pitcher on the Pirates, please raise your hand. I certainly didn't expect it, but I'm going to take it. Shut out, shut out. 15, 16 Ks for Mr. Unknown. Fuck 
few horned frogs. Although you don't actually play for me anymore. Um, huh, the St. Louis Browns picked him up. Good for you. Do you have any shutouts this season, Doc White? Do you have a single shutout this season you lay about? Come on, where's where's Masigi and my S SHO? He has two shutouts. Okay. Fine. I guess you can stay. I'm joking. I would never replace Doc White. Doc White is love and he is life. Um Okay, everyone is hitting a little bit better now. Except for Charlie Duffy. I think maybe it's time. I think it is time to acknowledge that Charlie Duffy may not be the starting center fielder that we're looking for. Like, Bay is the best center fielder of the three choices, but I think Pickering is the one I trust the most. So here we go. Pickering, you're in. Keep playing good baseball, everyone. I like how Frank Chance is hitting 266, and it doesn't even matter, and that we're still first in the league in run scored. That's pretty great. He's getting worse at base stealing. I might have to, to squish him. But as long as he's getting on base at nearly 30, over 35% of the time, I'm more than happy with him. Selbach, Shekard, Williams, Lowe. We're actually underpowered this season, relatively speaking. But I'm hoping that will improve a bit as our season progresses. Or you could just injure Jimmy Shekard, you assholes. Man, that's my number three hitter. That changes everything about this lineup. Um, fuck. Pickering, you're doing fine in center. Clark, you it for power, but not much else. Bay, you it for contact and not much else. Um, all right. Well, Jimmy Williams is getting bumped up to third hitter. I guess we'll start Harry Bay, but we're going to start him much lower in the lineup. I'm going to do copy. I'm going to do copy. So it's not what I wanted, but I guess try not to suck. Harry, if you could do me that kindness of being a good player until Jimmy Shackard is healthy again. Or you could just injure my other outfielder. What the fuck, game? Um. All right, Dale Lahanty, I need a warm body. You're up. I mean, I don't really want to play any of these guys at left field. Because they all kind of suck at it. Joe Tinker, you're the new number two hitter. Larry McLean, you're going to hit there, and I guess Fred Clark is going to start at left field. And then there's De La Hanty. All right, let's do some coaches stuff. Logan Barnes, you are welcome to come back.
John Tilly, you have done exceptional work. You are also equally welcome to come back. The rest of you know the rules. Like the Hotel California, you can start being a coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates, but you can never leave. Hey, thank you, Jimmy Williams, by the way, for stepping it up and being like, I got this, bro. I appreciate that, my dude. My entire starting rotation is in the All-Star game, as is one of my relievers. McLean is a starting catcher. Chance is starting first base. Williams is starting second base. Tinker is starting shortstop. And Shackard is starting right fielder. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. You have Tinker to Evers to Chance. The prophecy is fulfilled. Go up to the trading deadline. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, Shepard, get back in here. Uh, you're going to start for... How is Bay done, by the way? He's been okay. But he's no Jimmy Shepard. How's Fred Clark done? He has done exceptionally well, actually. All right. Um, McLean bat sixth. Low bats there, you bat there, Shepard bats there. Nice. And then once Selbach is healthy again, I'll probably demote Tinker in the lineup. But maybe not. I mean, he is hitting 300. Maybe we just make Selbach the best fifth hitter in Major League history. I don't know. Maybe. Hey, low went five for five. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, De La Hanty, back to the minors with you. <clears throat> Selbach, welcome. Bach. Get it. Get it. Uh, you're going to go ahead and hit fifth. Because I'm going to keep Tinker where he is until he proves he can't handle it. And I like having a bit more speed toward the top of the lineup, especially since he's my one base deal that's actually stolen a lot of bases. Although, admittedly, he hasn't been that great either. Has anyone actually stolen bases at a decent rate? I'm actually curious now. Uh, no one that steals bases regularly. My best volume base dealer is... Ollie Pickering? Nope, he's gone 8 for 4. Yeah, this isn't great. Y'all need to be not stealing bases, please. Stop costing me runs on the bases because you're like, ooh, time to steal. I got caught. Time to steal. I got caught. Uh, that's not cool, dudes. Why on earth would I give you half of my minor league system for your bullshit reliever? Go away. So you literally just made a trade proposal, and then you must have made it to two, to me and the AI at the same time. Um, that's fine. I think I need to do... not really. 
Look at Ollie Pickering hitting 300 plus. You like to see it. You like to see it a lot. Um, yeah, even if our power isn't as good as it's been in the past, it's still been real good. And, uh, I do not envy our opponents. Assuming we make it to the World Series, which, I mean, we have a 23-game lead. I feel pretty good about it. But I guess until it's mathematically clinched, uh, we shouldn't count our chickens before they're hatched. Is George freaking Davis going to be MVP again? No, Joe Tinker's better than George Davis. Damn. Player development. Nothing huge. Frank Chance's hitter of the month. Very nice. You like to see that. I fucking hate you, game. Really? This entire season... You're the worst. You are the worst. I mean, I guess it could have been even worse than that, I suppose. It could have been... Well, I don't want to say it because if I say how it could have been worse, it would instantly become worse. And I would be very sad. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. So that I don't make it worse. Something like that for instance. You piece of shit game. Ah. Why? Why does this happen every season. That one of my starters gets hurt. I am beyond irritated. Patsy Flaherty. I'm not even going to put Weimer on the DL. You're up. I'm going to have to figure out what happens. Stop injuring my players, you absolute dicks. Oh, Doc White won the pitching triple crown by getting win strikeouts and ERA. Very nice. Damn it. Well, the good news is that because Weimer is on the roster, I can just turn him back into a starter. Oh, I do need to have someone else on the team here. Frank Delhanty. Welcome. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put McIntyre last... And Weimer is going to be the number three starter. And I think he'll be ready to go by the time uh, by the time his turn comes up. Up, oh, White Sox won that game. 14 to 1. Holy shit. And look at Weimer, who comes back from his injury like, bitch, that's not even a thing. Ooh. Doc White is upset. I am too. Dun, 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 dun. Um. Doc, do it. No! 
Why? What a world. Yeah, Doc White's shitty pitching in the playoffs actually cost us this World Series title. I am unbelievably irritated by you, Doc White. How dare you allow so many hits? Yeah, he just wasn't good at all in the playoffs, was he? That's a real shame because if he'd been, you know, remotely as good as he was during the regular season, this would have been an easy World Series. But I put the ball in the hands of my best pitcher and he screwed it up. So shame on you, Doc White. You think about what you've done as you get your third Cy Young award in a row. Nope, fourth Cy Young award in a row. My bad. Yeah, I'm not I'm not okay with this. But you know what? We are the best team in Major League history at this point. Uh, no other team has won 113 games. So that's something we'll have forever. Oh, it doesn't actually show it yet. It will after the season, though. Man, that is some weak shit, dude. I can't believe that of all players, Doc White is the one who fumbled the ball. Hey, Harry Abel's crept into the top 10 prospects. Very nice. Um, I am going to increase my, my ticket cost again. I'm going to charge you 70 cents, Pittsburgh fans, per ticket. That's how I am. And you're going to love it. You're going to be like, oh, please, sir, charge me more. All right. So what happened this season? Let's do a quick retrospective. First of all, Joe fucking Tinker broke out. Like, I did not anticipate this ever happening. Where he just walks in and he's like, I'm damn good. And again, it's fueled partly by hitting triples, but he also just hit more. And Joe Tinker's got a shot at being the MVP this season. Jimmy Williams, I've run out of superlative things to say about you. You continually amaze me at how good you are and how incredibly bright that trade with St. Louis was. Like St. Louis, this was real dumb. And what did I, what did I give up for him? Bill Donovan, okay, Jimmy Sebring, whatever, Hope Ferris, bleh. Yeah, this was a super mega trade that is just, I'm so glad that worked out. Uh, Kip Selbach and Jimmy Shackard were almost as good as they've been in years past, but both suffered from injuries. Um, look at Shackard leading the league and on base percentage. Look at Kip Selbach leading the league and being named Kip. Larry McLean hasn't broken out yet, but he's continued to show that he has the potential to be an outstanding player. And he is a very good catcher. So I'm going to take that. Kreminger was a bit disappointing, but that's not his fault because Bobby Lowe was our third baseman for most of the season. And Pickering, I think, has played well enough that I think he'll be my opening day center fielder next year. Probably. Maybe. Unless you get somebody better, who knows. But yeah, so everyone contributed, and no one contributed above their abilities to normally compete. Like, Frank Chance had a bit of a down year for him. But because he was an amazing first baseman we got a lot more value out of him than I think we normally would. How did good old Fred do here? He did enough. He did fine. I can live with this line for my backup catcher as long as he provides quality defense. I'm good with that. 
pitching wise, I mean, McIntyre, Weimer, and Doc White were all great. Ralph Caldwell, not so much. I think maybe we're pitching him too frequently. But it's so hard to tell because he only pitched in 15 innings. So it's it's going to entirely be a function of, yeah. Did Al Orth make the All-Star team having only pitched five innings all year? He sure did. I don't get it, game. Whatever. Like, a bullpen is pretty much a pure luxury at this point. Um, it doesn't really matter very much. Patsy Flaherty, unsung hero on this team. And I know that Patsy wasn't, like, the most crucial pitcher, but they were able, he was able to... I keep wanting to call it she because the name is Patsy, right? But that doesn't make any sense. Um, but he really came in in the clutch when we needed someone to fill in for inevitably one of my pitchers gets injured. Um, yeah. Fine. Doing all the simming. I got another manager of the year. Gold gloves. How did Frank Chance not win a gold glove? Wait, what? Oh, because Doc White won a gold glove. All right, how good was George McBride? He was about as good as Joe Tinker. How good was Dave Brain? I think Chance was better. I think Chance should have won a gold glove, but whatever. Stupid George Davis. I'm sick of your shit, dude. Retire. Uh, Chance and Williams both got awards, as did Jimmy Shepard. Uh, McIntyre got Rookie of the Year. I'm not surprised. I'm best manager again. Doc White won MVP as a pitcher. Yeah, we finally got the MVP that you wanted, owner. Does that count for something? I hope it does. If it doesn't, go to hell. There, there we go. Yeah, there will never be a point in my entire life in which this channel is marked safe for kids. I can't control my profanity. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'm going to say that I'm sorry. Oh, Germany Smith is the other guy that I voted for. Look at handsome Henry Boyle. Let's let's do that. Fred Dunlop, absolutely, without hesitation. A hundred wins, damn! An eight-time MVP. I guess I never realized how good he was, but yeah, he's real, real good. Very nice. Gus Croc, I'm going to vote for you, even though no one else will. Ted Larkin, eh. You're better than the average Hall of Famer by Jaws, but I don't think I'm going to vote for you. If someone else wants to vote you in, I'm not going to stop them. Holy shit, Monty Ward. This is all me, right? Who drafted him? I did. Adonis freaking Terry. One of the best pitchers in Major League history. I didn't see that coming when I drafted the dude. Nice. Um, Anyone else I really want to vote for? I've got a bunch of spots on my ballot. Nah, I'm good. Uh, you know what? I need to look at Larkin's fielding record. He was just okay. Like, he was definitely better than average, but he was just okay. I think I'm just going to take this ballot as it is. It entertains me to no end that Cy Young is just another guy in this league. 
but Montgomery freaking Ward. Yeah. Uh, one more Hall of Famer this season. We have Eddie Collins Sr. I mean, is it fair to call him Eddie Collins Sr. when his son clearly hasn't been born yet? Hmm. Press whatever to Dow. I played L.A. Noir on PlayStation, so I don't know what it was for the Xbox in the meme. I think it was Triangle. Or Square? I haven't played that game in years. I need to play it again. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do this season in terms of drafting, because like, we're clearly not going to get any of the top players. We'll just see who's left when we do get to draft. All right. Harry Armbruster. You are a reasonably good center fielder with good power, middling contact, and pretty decent defense. There's a lot to like about you, Mr. Armbruster. And center field is a weakness for us. There's also Al Birch, who's arguably a better hitter, but not as good as a center fielder. I think I'm going to take Armbruster. Like, I'm taking him with the full expectation he's starting the season in the minors. But then again... No, I don't like his outfield error rating. Um... As a reminder, especially if you haven't played a bunch of OTP yourself, these ratings get better. These ratings don't. I've never seen any of these ratings ever change except to get worse. So, even though he's a better hitter than Arm Bruster, he's going to be an error machine. I'm going to take you. And that'll be good. Um, Alan Stork is a really good first base defense, first baseman defensively. He's not a real Stork, I don't think, but I, I kind of dig his profile. Joe Ward, meh. Dutch Meyer, meh. My name is Alan Stork. And I'm not a real Alvin. I am a real stork. Um, I don't know what possessed me to, to do that, but here we are. Uh, I'll always take another reliever. I'm going to corner the market on relief pitchers until everyone has to come to me for relievers. It's like, what's that, New York Highlanders? You want a, a closer... Give me Ty Cobb. And they'll be like, damn. You have trapped me. And then I will laugh maniacally all the way to the bank. I don't think that's going to happen, by the way. I'm pretty sure I would have to give them something insane, like Doc White and Frank Chance or something. To even get within sniffing distance of Ty Cobb. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. Uh rule five. Anyone entering rule five territory that I care about, I sure don't. Um I'm at least gonna look though, because remember what I'm in most interested at this point in my career is I'm looking for capable veterans in case of injuries. And I think there's a fair chance that said players may be available. Like a guy like Lefty Houts, who I know is a bad hitter, is a real good center fielder, and that has value. Jack McMahon, not so much. Yeah, I'm going to take Lefty here. And I think that's all I'll do. I don't really feel the need to, to take anyone else's stuff. Cool. If either Terry or Ward are not elected with 100% of the vote, I will know that this is rigged. 
Like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously, game, are you fucking kidding me? I think this is hard-coded. It has to be hard-coded. Because I cannot imagine anybody taking two of the best pitchers in the history of baseball and not voting for them. Especially when you have 20 ballot or 20 votes on each ballot. This has to be hard-coded into OTP that it's impossible for somebody to get 100% of the vote. But that's all right. Um... What are White's telling me Monty Ward? Was Monty Ward drafted by the Pirates? No, but he played for the Pirates for a long time. No, he was drafted by the Pirates. Yeah, neat. He's in the Hall of Fame as a Pittsburgh Pirate, although I can't claim I can't claim any credit for that since he wasn't on my team when I drafted him. I like how we're both kind of mimicking the real Hall of Fame, but also completely transforming it. Like, Montgomery Ward is in the actual Hall of Fame, like, in real life. But he's also... But Adonis Terry isn't even close. All right, let's jump to the beginning of spring training, shall we? Pickering is fine, I guess. Delahanty and Weimer both got better. That's encouraging. Draft pick deadline. I won't count anyone as a real Hall of Famer until I actually drafted them. Uh... Only ever my scouting director. Please. Please, game, please. Uh, arm Bruster, I'm going to let you play in spring training a bit. Uh, Fien and Hillebrand, why not? Uh, do all the things, please. It's it's the it's spring training. I don't really care who does what. I am a tiny bit sad we didn't win the World Series last season, but there's nothing to indicate that that's going to change. So I'm actually most disappointed, frankly, in Doc White who just really didn't pitch his best in the playoffs. Like, yes, the man was the, the National League MVP. I can't be too upset with that performance, but... Like, come on, dude. You should be like, oh, man, I'm going to pull out my super secret mega pitch. That gets everybody out instantly. Way to go, Harry Armbruster. Oh, well. Um, right. I have 11 pitchers. Hillebrand, you're going down. Flaherty, here's my problem. Oh, Morrissey can't be a starter. Yeah, Flaherty, I think you get to stay on the team. And Fien has a chance to get even better, so I'm going to go ahead and let you pitch in the minors this season. Uh, position players... McGuire's still decent defensively, but I might get rid of him. Uh, Bobby Wallace, you're done. I only kept you because no one would give me anything for you last season, but maybe I can get something for you. I can literally get Mike Griffin, who's even worse than you are. So you know what we were going to get instead, Bobby Wallace? You're cut. I don't care whether the fans are upset. He sucks. You should trust in me. I'm a multi-time general manager, manager of the year. I know what I'm doing. SMH. Uh, Rickert, you can go back to the minors. 
And Beecher, you are wholly unnecessary. And now we're down to 25. New York got Eddie Collins too? Holy shit, New York. And yet you're gonna tell me that you're gonna start Josh Clark. Man, you guys deserve to be in the second division. An elite talent like freaking Eddie Collins and you bury him in the minors. I guess, you know what, it's fine. All right, let us set the staff and the lineup. I didn't ask for it. I want you to leave. There we go. White for sure as the number one. I'm going to still stick with the rotation that worked last year, even though I know McIntyre went, was quite good as well. I just, I think it works best for him. Uh, you know what we're going to do this season? Because clearly I need to spread the innings out a bit more. Uh, Flaherty, you're going to have your traditional role. That's not going to change. Everyone else is going to be a middle reliever. And I'm going to say less often and more often for certain pitchers. Because I don't want them bringing in relievers just because, oh no, it's a seventh inning, time to bring in Ralph Caldwell or whatever. That's not how I want it to work. I want it to work as, let's bring in the best pitcher at the best time. So we're going to have Caldwell and Orth is used more often. Uh, we're going to have... The worst pitcher, which is Morrissey. Uh, you're going to be a void high leverage. And then Dresser and Case, you can both be normal usage. Lineups. Get your lineups here. Okie dokie. Shekard's a number three. Uh, there will come a time when I'm sure I'll want someone else, but that time is not here yet. Jimmy Williams, batting cleanup. Chance batting leadoff. And I think it's Tinker's time to go ahead and play bat second, at least in the beginning of the season here. I can't believe you led the league in war and didn't win any hardware other than a second place finish. Like, you didn't get Gold Glove. You didn't get Silver Slugger. That is some weak sauce, but I you are the MVP of my heart, Joe Tinker. And you always will be. Kip Selbach, Bobby Lowe... Larry McLean and Ollie Pickering. Done. <clears throat> that was easy. Um, Karish, you're going to back up at catcher and first base. Back up second and short is going to be McGuire again. Back up third base is Mr. Greminger with Mr. McGuire as the tertiary third baseman. Uh, outfield is going to be, gosh, Fred Clark backing up. Then De La Hanty. Uh, Lefty Houts. Then Duffy. And then Duffy backs up in right field. 
And I've completely neglected Harry Bay, who's actually decent. Uh, you're going to be the tertiary backup and left and right. Um, pinch hitter. Pinch hitter. Pinch hitter. Excuse me. Uh, oh, goodness. Sorry. Uh, pinch hitter. Pinch runner. And then I guess Lefty Houts can be the backup pinch runner. Perhaps. That seems like a good lineup step chart. Let us cut loose, my friends. Let's baseball real good. A trade proposal. You will offer me a relief pitcher for hard pass. Uh, Tinker, I'm just going to bench you for the two weeks. I'm not going to put you on the DL. We can let McGuire play for a couple weeks. So we're going to go ahead and bench him for 14 days to give him time to recover. Tinker's a little bit too important, too important for me to risk it. Yeah, 2,000 hits for Selbach. Nice. Like, Selbach has a very decent chance at maybe someday getting in the Hall of Fame. I'm not convinced he's there yet. But he might be. Uh, who else do we have that's coming up in the Milestone Watch? Any other Pirates? Can we appreciate how Ed McKean is going to get 3,000 hits, perhaps? Man. If any one player is associated with me, it's him. John McGraw, he's one of mine. Charlie Duffy could get 2,000 hits a season, but probably won't. Chance could get 1,500 hits and probably will. Very nice. Uh, Kip Selbach could get 1,000 RBI this season. It doesn't really matter to me, but it might matter to the voters. Frank Chance is close to getting his 300th stolen base. Very nice. Tom Daly. Oh, no, I'm thinking of someone else. That's not the guy that I acquired. Any pirates in the pitchers? Nope. Okay. I'm not prepared for a world in which Cannonball Titcomb has 400 wins, when in real life he didn't even manage 40. But that's fine. His nickname alone, his his name alone is amazing. Um. Also, if your name, if your given name is Cannonball, please, I insist that you put it in the comment section. So Spud or or Cannonball, uh, go ahead and uh, and make yourselves known, and we'll just keep going. Another trade proposal that I probably won't take. What is it about my team that convinces you I need bad relief pitchers? I just don't get it. I don't get what it is about the Pittsburgh Pirates that makes everybody think, let's dump off our crappy relievers on them. Can you stop injuring Weimer, please? I don't want him to become the new Nixie Cunningham. Was, was that C Cunningham? Was that Nixie's last? No, Callahan was Nixie's name. Good old Nixie. Personal message. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, Tinker getting worse at contact is not something I wanted to see. That's pretty much his entire game. Uh, Armbruster is getting quite good. Uh, Tinker's doing fine, though. I'm not too worried about him. I'm very concerned about Jimmy Williams, though. Uh, he seems like he's taken a bit of a hit. That says Bobby Lowe. Hmm. Is this a... Ooh, Pickering's defense is really getting bad. Yeah. Oh, Pickering, my dude. I had such high hopes for you this season. But you just can't handle center anymore. And you're not hitting enough to justify keeping you in the lineup. What could I get if I traded you? Is the answer nothing? I bet the answer is nothing. But maybe it's not nothing. Holy shit, it's actually a lot. Like, I don't want Jimmy Barrett, but it's cool that you're offering. Give me Roy Evans right now. Let's go. Do it. Do it now. Hey, Roy, uh, you're my new number two starter. <clears throat> and then I'm going to call up Armbruster, and he's going to play center field. Because, yeah, Pickering just can't handle it. Boom. And boom. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Because like, if Roy Evans is as good as he looks, and he's consistent, I'll probably consider trading Weimer. You have an MVP winner. Stop complaining. I have given you. L let me put it to you this way, Kenny Permenter Jr., if that is your real name. I have given you four consecutive National League pennants and a World Series. If you have any gripe whatsoever, you need to sh you need to ask the EFU. You need to, to put a damn sock in it, because I'm sick of your shit. I don't know why didn't you say shut the fuck up. It's not like it's any different than I would usually say. Um, you two can stay, maybe. Um, here we go. Dave Egler, how would you get along with the Pirates? Every one of my pitchers would hate your guts. So, I guess that means Favel gets to stay. Because everybody loves him, except for Charlie Case. I'm always curious as to why, like, one specific player hates the bench coach, but nobody else does. Like, maybe Favel Wordsworth, like, ran over Charlie Case's dog or something by accident, like backing out of the driveway. I don't know, man. We're talking mostly Model Ts at this point. I don't know if they could kill a dog. Probably. Um, Jesus, way to go, Roy Evans. I trade for you. We instantly crap the bed. Whatever, dude. Um... Things happened. All stars. McIntyre. White. Caldwell. McLean. Chance. Williams. Tinker. Selbach and Shepard. You love to see it. I realize I've been using roster expansion. That's probably something I should start doing, in all honesty. Stop offering me bad players. Like, do they just think I'm stupid? Is that what they're believing? That I'm just an idiot? Maybe. I'll go and go on a rehab assignment, Mr. Weimer. And then I'll call you up later on.
one year time has expired. Of course, you could just injure my center fielder. Thanks, game. Uh, I thought the season was going too well. Can you just not? Please? Uh, Jake, I'm going to... How's Evans been pitching? He's been pitching real well, actually. Do I dare be an innovator and go for a four-man rotation? Ooh. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Instead, I think I'm going to make you my mega super powered emergency starter for a bit. And then if one of my other starters gets injured, then we'll swap it over. Uh, Tinker, I'm not even going to take you out of the lineup. It's not worth my time. I also realized I didn't replace Armbruster, but that's fine. I trust the game to know what to do. I oh, hear go to the end of August, please. Uh, he still isn't ready to come back. As long as you're back for the postseason, I'll survive. Player development. Roy Evans got better. That's pretty neat. There you go. How was old Nixie doing, by the way? He ended up with Cleveland. And yeah, I I definitely called the shit out of this. Uh, I definitely called that he was going to be much worse going forward. I knew how to sell high. And I sold super high on Nixie. I do feel kind of bad, though. Like, I know Nixie had been kind of a staple of Pittsburgh for several years, but he just got hurt too much. Like, is he going to be a Hall of Famer? I doubt it. Uh, only give me Major League, please. There we go. I don't think I'd vote for him, in all honesty. I think he's merely a good pitcher, but I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Stupid Gettys Gettysburg Eddie Plank. I'll plank you. Um, I realize it didn't make any sense, but that's okay. Look, would it be a season with the Pittsburgh Pirates if Bobby Lowe didn't randomly get injured at least once? It wouldn't be. That's just how life is. And then McGuire gets bumped up as the, the starter. Or the backup. I frankly don't see why Bobby Lowe is hanging on. He's in his 40s. It's not like, like, he's a borderline Hall of Famer. I don't know that I would vote for him, but I also don't know that I wouldn't vote for him. i definitely give it some serious thought. But, I mean, he's 41 already. It's not like he's going to change. I mean, I guess he's still being productive at a pretty high level, so I suppose it doesn't make much sense for him to retire, but I am kind of surprised he's sticking around as long as he is. Oh, thank goodness. Harry, please save us from Lefty Hotes. Uh... 
oh no, my my single A ball manager is going to retire. However, shall we deal with that? All right, another chance at World Series glory. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to hire a new A-ball manager, but I can do it in the offseason. Eh, I'll just promote Charlie here. You seem like a good dude. Go to Jacksonville. And then we'll find someone else. Ah, the St. Louis Browns, my old nemesis from my AL playthroughs. I'm not going to pitch Roy Evans unless... Doc, what? You didn't lead the league in strikeouts or ERA. You're clearly a terrible pitcher now. I'm joking. Uh, he's real good. You are perfectly rested. Doc White, you need... This has to be your redemption story, right? This has to be you proving that you still got it. And we won. Uh, just took 11 innings. Oh, damn it. Boom! You got Roy Evans, son. Nice. Nice. Yeah, holy shit did this acquisition work out. Um, he stepped up in a really big way in order to make sure that we won this World Series. But, oh, we've done it. We have won another World Series. Are you still going to bitch that I didn't bring in an MVP, though? I wonder. Yep. <laughs> oh, shut the hell up. Just stop talking. Hey, there's Lou. Oh, Eddie Sakat. I missed him. Yeah, he was taken two drafts ago. He's another uh, Hall of Famer. No, he wasn't. He didn't make the Hall of Fame because of the, the, the Black Sox scandal. But I think he had a decent chance if he hadn't. All right. Well, we did it, my friends. Uh, we have arguably the most dominant series of seasons in, in Major League history, at least theoretically, at this point, right? At this point in Major League history, uh, we are all over the leaderboard for all-time wins. Uh, if we look at Teams NL, boom. We have the the lead for winning percentage. Um, yeah. We are a two-time champion, three-time champion, because one time before I got there. Uh, the Phillies are st the Phillies and the Giants are still, and the White Sox are still the kings of Major League Baseball, but. We're coming for you, Philly. We're coming for you. And oh yeah, let's not forget, who's that guy that won the World Series with the Phillies for the first time? Oh right, it, it goes back in time and renames the teams. 
So here are the Boston Doves winning the World Series, and I won Manager of the Year that year. Who are the Boston Doves now? Oh, do they still exist? Oh, I think the Boston Doves are going to become the Boston Braves, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so I have won four championships by myself, and it actually excludes this season for some weird reason. But I did it this season, too. I have five. Yeah, here's my championship with the Phillies. And I definitely built them a team that could be competitive for a long time before they fired me. You dicks. Look at that. Mm. I've won 2,429 games. How does that rank all time? Managers. Most wins. Lip Pike, I'm coming for you. I love how I personally led the campaign to make sure he didn't get elected to the Hall of Fame, and yet he is, he is the guy. I'm coming for you. This is neck and neck. We've each managed exactly the same number of games. That's pretty funny. Um... Yeah, wins. You have me beat by five. Winning percentage. I'm pretty damn good. I actually lead the league in losses. I don't like that one so much. But yeah, I'm coming for you, Lip Pike. Be warned. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to drop a comment if your name is either Spud or Cannonball. But until next time, this has been Evendian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.